Hello and welcome to this week's Fighting Scott Sports Report. I am Tyler Trumbauer. We head to St. Louis to start as the Scott Trade Center was the host for the 2015 Division I Wrestling National Championships. Six Fighting Scots made the trip to the Scott Trade Center in St. Louis for the Wrestling National Championships. Vince Pickett at 197 was one of them. He lost by decision twice and was ousted at 125, Corey Mines made it to the quarterfinals before losing and then lost in the consolation bracket to be eliminated. At 184, Vic Avery made it all the way to the semifinals before he lost to Gabe Dean, who was the eventual national champion. Vic Avery wants his revenge. Yeah, you know, my, my journey, again, it's unexpected. I'd like, if anybody wants the time to hear it, I'd love to explain it. I'm sure it opened some eyes, but uh, it has not been most of these dudes' journeys. It really come from the bottom of this sport to the top, just through hard work and through God. And, uh, you know, I'm blessed for that, but I had to, I've been in the backside my whole career, you know what I mean, battling for third and stuff. And mm. So it's, it's nothing new to me, you know. I want to be in the finals, I want to be on the stage, and I want to win the championship, so... You know, people are happy, but I'm, I'm happy if I took third, but like at the same time, if I could trade being a two-time All-American and, and a one-time national champ, I would have rather, you know, I would have rather not place this year if I could have won, you know, if the deal was to win it next year or something, so, but it is what it is. I'm, I'm glad that I uh, hopefully showed some people that I'm tough and hopefully opened some eyes that uh, I am here and that I'm coming for Dean next year as well. AJ Shop had quite the trip to St. Louis after being upset in his first match. He won seven straight to earn All-American status and finished third, including four falls as well. That's what he loves to do. I was scared. Uh, I could have been knocked out of the tournament at any point of that four matches I needed to win to solidify my All-American status, but it's really cool that... Uh, and I got one win, and then I just started pinning people, and that's, that's what I love to do. At 149, Dave Habit was the third seed, and he talked about wrestling at Edinburgh against all these bigger schools. I mean, I don't got to tell you guys, we get after it. You know, we really do get after it. Um, we don't care about how the facilities look, how much resources we have, or how much money we get. But we have wrestling mats and wrestling shoes just like everybody else. And we expect to win just like everyone else, and we train like it. And that's why we're producing that way. I can say for AJ and Mitchell, we're all the same. Even Corey Mines, we're all the same age. We came in together. And I think, uh, I, don't, I don't know what Mitchell would say, but I know that uh, I'd like to say that it, I, don't th I think I've helped him a lot. And I can definitely say um, he's helped me tremendously, you know. Um, so uh, I think us training together is really, I mean, I think, we, I think those two, AJ and Mitchell, would be fine on their own but I think we, we took it to a new level together. Habit advanced all the way to the national championship match at 149 pounds, where he faced top-seeded Drake Hodeschelt of Missouri. Hodeschelt did get the best of Habit 3-1 in sudden victory with a takedown in that extra period of wrestling, but he did earn All-American status as well. At 141, Mitchell Port was the number two seed he advanced all the way to national championships where he faced Logan Stieber, who he faced earlier. Port talked about what happened in that first match in a press conference after the semifinals. I think I just got to get on my attacks and stuff. Um, he scored from just about every position that he was able to score from, whereas I didn't put myself into scoring positions to score from. So I think if I get to more scoring positions, um, hopefully I can score out of them. Uh, Port unfortunately had to take second place to Stieber, who won by an 11 to 5 decision. It, it's uh, you know, it's something that's culminated from years and years of work and, and these kids being together and you know they did the work. You know they they did what we asked of them and. Uh, Unbelievable. That wraps up the 2014-15 season for the Fighting Scots, the best season ever for an Edinburgh wrestling squad. The team will now have to try and replace the four seniors, a crew that has 487 combi combined victories in an Edinburgh singlet. The women's lacrosse team welcomed Shippensburg to a snow-free Sox-Harrison Stadium on Saturday for its home NPSAC opener. 
The Fighting Scots sunk the ship as they defeated Shippensburg 16-9 to improve to 4-0 on the young season, making it the best start in school history. Alexa Healy, who finished with seven goals, kicked things off for Burrow with three straight goals to take a 3-0 lead. Becca Martin, who was last week's PSAC Player of the Week, chipped in eight assists to the cause. The ladies visit Lock Haven today and visit and excuse me, finishes the week at home, welcoming Kutztown to the borough on Friday at 3 p.m. and battle Millersville Saturday at 2. The tennis team spent spring break at the Spring Tennis Fest in Hilton Head Island, South Carolina. It wasn't a very successful trip for the Scots on the courts, but they bounced back this past week. The women's squad had just one match this past week as they visited Walsh University and unfortunately were dealt a 9-0 loss. The men had a much busier week and found some success as well, going 3-0 in the week. They earned victories against District of Columbia, Millersville, and Westchester. The ladies host Cal today and Slippery Rock on Thursday before facing the University of Charleston on Saturday in Morgantown, West Virginia and visiting West Virginia Wesleyan on Sunday. The men visit Fairmont State on Saturday and West Virginia Wesleyan on Sunday. The outdoor track and field season began for Edinburgh over the weekend as the Scots competed in the UNC Charlotte 49er Classic. With it now being the outdoor season, both the men and women are competing for Edinburgh. The men's 4x400 meter relay squad of Charles Ivey, Kyle Shin, Joel Lohr, and Corey Weefing finished fourth. Also, John Gusau took seventh in a 3,000 meter run. For the women, Emma Sullivan finished fourth in the 3,000 meter run, while Allison Gibbons earned eighth in the 800 meter run. These squads will be splitting up. For the weekend, some athletes will be competing in the Raleigh Relays at NC State on Friday and Saturday, while others will compete at the Wooster Inventational on Saturday in Wooster, Ohio. That's all for this week. Before we go, we'd like to congratulate Stacy Schreckengoss and Bree Dietrich of the women's swim team and indoor track and field team for earning All-American status at their respective national events earlier this month. As always, be sure to follow us on Twitter at ETV Sports to stay up to date on all the latest borough athletic happenings.